Good evening and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. I'm Stephen Young and I'll be providing the commentary for tonight's broadcast. We've had a very busy day and uh, Will Robinson Smith is traveling as we speak and uh, our photographers uh, are getting some rest after a very busy day covering the third integrated test flight of the Starship vehicle at uh, Starbase in Texas. More on that in a bit, but you're uh, looking at a live view of uh, Space Launch, uh, Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, where uh, the Falcon 9 is uh, sitting poised for launch. There was uh, a scrubbed attempt last night for those of you who joined us then. The countdown reached uh, about two minutes before liftoff uh, when the clock halted and uh, the uh, launch was scrubbed. We don't know the exact reason. There were some weather problems earlier in the day, but it's uh, not clear if they returned to present a problem. But tonight, it couldn't be better. The skies are blue with a few wispy clouds, and uh, this is... Uh, pretty much ideal conditions. The 45th Weather Squadron issued a forecast last night and uh, they were um, giving a uh, less than 5% chance of uh, a violation tonight. And that forecast from the 45th Weather Squadron really couldn't get any better. The primary concerns tonight are none. So uh, it's very rare that we see that. Usually uh, there's the odd chance of cumulus cloud that uh, they always uh, throw in there just to cover themselves. But tonight uh, the forecast uh, is looking great. There's uh, also no concerns for upper level winds and uh, the booster recovery weather also out in the Atlantic Ocean. So liftoff tonight is scheduled for 7.04 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's uh, 23.04 UTC for our viewers around the world. If you'd like to support our coverage of the space program, please hit the like button and click subscribe so you get notifications when new videos are posted and you won't wi miss any of our live streams. Please also share this stream. It helps more people find our coverage and everything else going on with our channel. We can't do these launch broadcasts without the support of our members and viewers. We'd like to thank everyone who's made a contribution to help fund our coverage. And if you'd uh, like to uh, support us, you can do so by making a donation through the YouTube Super Chat feature or becoming a member of our YouTube channel. And uh, just simply hitting the like button really helps us out. So uh, if you haven't done so already, please hit the like button and uh, that will uh, bring in more viewers for tonight's launch, which uh, if uh, all continues on track, should be quite spectacular. We're about 15 minutes away from the point by which the launch director will have given their go-no-go no go decision for the start of propellant load for tonight's launch. 
If you haven't joined us for one of these broadcasts recently, uh, we do not receive mission audio from SpaceX any longer. However, we have been covering these uh, launches since the birth of the Falcon program and uh, we'll be able to uh, spot the telltale signs that the fueling process is underway. So we'll keep you uh, posted and uh, pass on any updates that SpaceX does provide through social media. SpaceX is uh, running the countdown tonight from its Hangar X facility at the Kennedy Space Center. That's uh, also the location where they refurbish the Falcon 9 boosters and uh, prepare them for flight. There's also a separate building there where the processing of the Starlink satellites takes place. And they are uh, encapsulated in their payload fairings at uh, that site. SpaceX will also have support for this launch from their control rooms at their headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Once again, tonight's launch is targeting liftoff at 7.04 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, there'll be multiple backup opportunities uh, through the night. There's a four-hour window. Uh, hopefully, uh, they don't need that because uh, it would be uh, really nice to see the, the Falcon 9 liftoff in these uh, conditions as uh, sunset approaches. So for those of you who were up earlier this morning uh, watching the uh, Starship launch, you will have seen that that uh, launch was uh, successful, uh, a successful test. Um, the Starship vehicle itself did not survive re-entry, but uh, it's being deemed a success as it uh, achieved uh, many of the goals that uh, SpaceX had set out for the flight. It uh, also uh, reached a point much further than the earlier test flights. The uh, booster was uh, encountered some problems on its uh, return and that uh, broke up about 462 meters over the uh, Gulf of uh, Mexico and uh, SpaceX has provided a little more information about the, the flight. They uh, also say that they did not perform the planned relight of a Raptor engine due to the roll rates that we witnessed. So they still have some work to do and there will no doubt be uh, an investigation to determine what went wrong on this flight by the FAA. Our photographer, Adam Bernstein, captured this uh, shot with a remote camera showing the liftoff of the Starship vehicle. It, uh, there was some fog and cloud in the area, but uh, a lot of that cleared in time for the liftoff, which was pushed back uh, by almost uh, an hour and a half. But uh, there were still some great views, and the onboard cameras on the Starship uh, were spectacular.
So with the countdown clock at uh, T minus 47 minutes and 10 seconds, let's take a look at the events that are coming up on tonight's mission. If uh, all goes according to plan, the SpaceX launch director over at Hangar X will uh, verify the go for propellant load in uh, the uh, next 10 minutes or so. If the go is given, the actual start of propellant load will begin at the T minus 35 minute mark. Kerosene will be loaded on the first and second stage, and liquid oxygen will be pumped aboard the first stage also. At T minus 16 minutes, it's the turn of uh, liquid oxygen to start flowing into the second stage. Prior to this, we'll see the so-called big vent from the strong back at the launch pad. This big cloud of vapor that streams away from the strong back uh, is uh, a sign of the feed lines being chilled down prior to that start of the loading of liquid oxygen on the upper stage of the vehicle. At T minus seven minutes, the chill down of the nine Merlin engines will get underway. This involves opening the pre-valves to allow a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and the turbo pumps. This is designed to protect the Merlin 1D engines from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. About six minutes prior to liftoff, the first stage kerosene tank should also be full. Then at T minus four and a half minutes, we'll see the strong back begin to retract from the Falcon 9 vehicle. It will recline to an angle of about one and a half degrees, leaning back ever so slightly from the Falcon 9. It will stay in that position until liftoff then at ignition, that strong back will pull back in a more rapid fashion to clear the way for the vertical climb of the Falcon 9 from pad 39A. As we approach the final minute of the countdown, at about the T minus two minute mark, liquid oxygen loading should be complete. And the Falcon 9 will be carrying about one million pounds of propellant. At 60 seconds, the control of the countdown will be handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard computers. The propellant tanks will be brought up to flight, and the launch director will give their final go for launch. T minus three seconds, the engine ignition command will be issued. If all nine of those first stage engines ignite and are performing as normal, the flight computer will give the command to release the hold down clamps and the Falcon 9 will lift off on this Starlink delivery mission.
Well, with the countdown clock approaching T minus 40 minutes, we're coming up on that point where the launch director should be polling their team. And we will uh, hope to receive some kind of uh, indication from SpaceX uh, that uh, they are go for the start of propellant load, which as uh, I set out earlier in the timeline, will begin at the T minus 35 minute mark. While we uh, wait for word from SpaceX on the progress of the countdown, let's take a look at the trajectory that the Falcon 9 will take when it lifts off, hopefully in less than 40 minutes. So the launch uh, is taking place from the Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A is the site of uh, many space shuttle and Apollo missions and uh, has also seen the launch of all of the Crew Dragon missions to date and all of the s uh, Falcon Heavy vehicles. The Falcon 9 will fly in a southeast trajectory towards the Caribbean. Following stage separation, the first stage will continue to coast downrange. There'll be a, a burn to slow its descent, the so-called entry burn. And uh, then uh, just a short while before touchdown, they'll, it will fire its engines again for a landing burn. and. Uh, it will touch down on the drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. That's one of three drone ships that SpaceX operates. Two from Port Canaveral here on the East Coast and uh, one out of uh, the Port of Los Angeles on the West Coast. The uh, upper stage will continue on with the Starlink satellites and they will be deployed a little over an hour into the mission. Meanwhile, the fairings for this uh, flight will uh, drop on uh, parachutes or paracels to the Atlantic Ocean where they will be recovered. Tonight, we believe they're using Doug for that purpose. They'll scoop those uh, fairings out of the water. And you can see here in this image that SpaceX released a while ago, the process of uh, hoisting those fairing halves out of the water and onto the deck of the recovery vessel. We're about a minute away from the point at which SpaceX should start loading propellants on the vehicle. We have uh, not had any word from SpaceX uh, as to whether the launch director has given their go for the start of that process. I suspect the uh, SpaceX team is still celebrating the uh, earlier flight of the Starship vehicle, so perhaps they'll be a little late bringing us an update, um, but we'll uh, stay tuned for that. We'll also keep an eye on the vehicle, and we should see signs of that fueling process getting underway if indeed they are proceeding with tonight's launch.
that take a look at the first stage of the Falcon 9 in this zoomed in view. And you think you can make out uh, a, there's a, a whitish band on that first stage. It's around there that we should see any signs that uh, the fueling process is underway. The super cold propellants chill down the fuselage of the first stage, and that allows the uh, Florida humid air to condensate and create uh, frost and uh, vapor. And uh, that's a very good indication when we see that, that the fueling process has actually begun. And we have just had word from SpaceX that uh, propellant load is indeed underway for this launch at 7.04 p.m. tonight. They say that uh, all systems and weather are currently go, so looking good for tonight's launch. With that propellant load process underway, that locks SpaceX into the 7.04 p.m. launch time because of the nature of these super chill propellants, they cannot recycle and make another attempt once they begin that process of loading the super chilled liquid oxygen and uh, kerosene RP-1 rocket grade fuel on the Falcon 9 vehicle. And you can now start to see those uh, wisps of vapor coming away from the first stage of the Falcon 9. This is booster 1062, which is making its 19th flight. So you can see there's quite a buildup of soot on the first stage, and uh, that really uh, helps show up the, uh, the white vapor from the condensation uh, as the, uh, the warm Florida air hits that cold surface, which uh, is uh, the outer layer of the tank, which is being filled with the super cold propellant, uh, clearly visible now and uh, that frost line will uh, serve as a handy fuel gauge for us. We'll gradually see that creep up the first stage of the vehicle and that will uh, actually give us a pretty good indication of the amount of fuel actually inside the tanks as they uh, go through this process.
So I did mention earlier that this is the 19th flight of this particular booster that um, will make it the uh, joint fleet leader. SpaceX had previously certified its uh, Falcon 9 rockets for 15 flights, um, but it is now broken through that barrier with uh, multiple vehicles. So this, uh, this booster, Booster 1062, will be joining 1058 and 1061, which uh, have also chalked up 19 flights to date. Unfortunately, uh, Booster 1058 won't get to uh, see a 20th flight as uh, it uh, was destroyed uh, after it had successfully launched and landed, uh, but it was uh, on the drone ship uh, coming back into Port Canaveral when it hit high seas and high winds, and uh, the vehicle toppled over and uh, unfortunately uh, was lost at sea. Only uh, the very base of the rocket was left uh, attached to the octograbber on the drone ship deck. So let's uh, take a look at uh, the previous history of this booster. It made its first flight in November of 2020, and that was the uh, the launch of a GPS-3 satellite, the uh, so-called Space Vehicle 4, which was built by Lockheed Martin. It was the fourth version of the latest version of the U.S. Space Force's GPS Constellation satellites. It was uh, back on GPS duty uh, the following year in uh, June of 2021 with the launch of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5 satellite. The third flight of uh, this particular booster was on September 15th, 2021 and attracted uh, a lot of attention. It was the first time this booster launched humans into orbit. And uh, on this particular occasion, it carried the four-member crew of the uh, Inspiration4 mission on Dragon Resilience. Its next launch uh, was a Starlink mission, the Starlink 4-5 mission, which carried 49 of the uh, previous version 1.5 satellites. Its fifth launch, uh, it was back on uh, duty delivering uh, astronauts to the International Space Station. It uh, carried uh, Crew Dragon Endeavour and the Axiom-1 private astronauts on uh, a mission to the station. Its sixth flight followed uh, just over 21 days later on April 29th of uh, 2022. And uh, that was another Starlink mission. It then carried into orbit uh, the NILESAT 301 satellite. Its uh, next eight flights were all Starlink missions. And then uh, it actually carried out a, a launch for uh, one of the competing networks uh, that uh, another broadband internet from Space Service. It launched the OneWeb 17 mission carrying 40 of uh, that company's satellites. SpaceX had previously launched uh, two earlier missions for OneWeb. That company was originally planning to use the Russian Soyuz rocket to complete its constellation, but had to switch to alternative vehicles after the invasion of Ukraine. The 14th flight of the booster was the Arabsat 7B satellite on May 27th, 2023. 
It was a telecommunications satellite built by Airbus for Arabsat, and it is uh, providing C-band and KU-band coverage for Europe, the Middle East, and Central Asia. Then this booster returned to Starlink duties, uh, carrying out the its, uh, its 15th through 18th flights. Most recently, it flew on January 29th of this year on the Starlink 6-38 mission. You can uh, really see the frost and vapor creeping up the outside of the Falcon 9 as the loading of liquid oxygen continues on the first stage. The second stage kerosene tank should be full by now. And uh, loading of kerosene also is continuing on the first stage of the Falcon 9. That process of uh, kerosene load will continue until about the six minute mark in the countdown. We're also coming up on the point where we'll see the so-called big vent. And that's uh, part of the process of chilling down the propellant lines that run up the strong back structure to the second stage. A chill down process is necessary to prevent the propellant from boiling off uh, prior to the prior to the start of uh, second stage load. Once again, if you're just joining us, uh, you're watching uh, live views of the Falcon 9 rocket at Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. Liftoff is targeted for 7.04 p.m. Eastern Time, 23.04 UTC. We're just a few seconds away now from the start of the big vent. And there it is, right on time, the big cloud of vapor starting to escape from that vent port on the strong back. The uh, winds here at the Space Center are uh, blowing in off the ocean uh, towards the west. So that uh, plume of vapor is uh, coming in our direction. You can see here from the, uh, the view of the uh, flag, the wind direction here, just a light breeze tonight. Beautiful conditions, still some uh, clouds in the area, but uh, very thin, lots of blue sky.
Tonight's launch will be the 25th Falcon 9 mission of the year. If uh, everything goes as planned and it lifts off, it will be the 104th SpaceX orbital launch in the last 365 days. SpaceX uh, hoped to hit 100 launches last year. They fell short by just a few launches. And uh, this year, they uh, have hopes of reaching uh, about 140 missions of the Falcon 9 vehicle. Just checking in on the chat, I want to thank uh, Calistia Lee for a $20 super chat who uh, says show your support by hitting the thumbs up button. And uh, yes, that really does help us. So uh, please, if you haven't done so already, please give that like button a push. I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Jim Edgar for a uh, also for a $20 Super Chat, who uh, thanks us for the coverage and says he's been up since 4.30 a.m. Pacific time for the uh, Starship launch. I think, uh, I think a lot of us are working on, uh, on very little sleep at the moment. And uh, also want to thank uh, Dom's Astrophotography uh, for a $2 Super Chat. Thank you so much. Uh, your contributions really... Uh, help us bring you this coverage of uh, launches here at the Cape and uh, around the world. And uh, we're just seeing now the, the big vent coming to an end. A cloud of vapor uh, just dissipating at the base of the uh, rocket there. And with the countdown clock now past the 16 minute mark, the start of liquid oxygen load on the second stage should now be underway. As we prepare to get into the final minutes of the countdown, let's uh, take a look at uh, the Falcon 9 rocket. It stands 70 meters or 229 feet tall and has a diameter of 3.66 meters or 12 feet. The bottom two thirds of the rocket is the first stage. Today's first stage booster has flown 18 times before. It uh, is designated tail number 1062 in SpaceX's fleet. And as I mentioned earlier, it will be the joint fleet leader after making uh, this particular mission. Above the first stage is the interstage. This is a composite structure consisting of an aluminum honeycomb core surrounded by carbon fiber. In the inset image, you can also see the deployable hypersonic grid fins. These are titanium winglets that provide stability and steering for the Falcon 9 as it falls back through the atmosphere, tail first like a dart, as it uh, aims for a landing on uh, the drone ship uh, out in the Atlantic. At the top of the interstage are the three mechanical latches that uh, attach the 
first stage to the second stage. At first stage main engine cutoff, high pressure helium is used to release those latches, those latches and four pneumatic pushes will ensure there's a clean separation. The second stage engine nozzle is safely housed inside that interstage adapter until stage separation. And that upper stage is powered by a single modified Merlin engine called a Merlin vacuum engine or MVAC. It's uh, equipped with a large nozzle that is optimized for burns in the vacuum of space. It produces more than 200,000 pounds of thrust and will be fired twice on today's flight to place the 23 Starlink satellites into their intended orbit. That MVAC engine burns the same propellant mix, kerosene and liquid oxygen as the first stage. It will ignite a third time after the deployment of the Starlink satellites and that's a deorbit burn to drive the upper stage back into the atmosphere so it will burn up and that eliminates the risk of creating any unnecessary space debris on this mission. At the very top of the rocket is the payload fairing containing the 23 satellites. It's made up of a carbon composite material and is 13.1 meters, 43 feet tall, and 5.2 meters, or 17.1 feet in diameter. The two halves of the payload fairing will be recovered a little further downrange from where the first stage touches down on the drone ship, and uh, they will gently splash down under parachutes. The recovery vessel will fish those fairings out of the water and return them to Cape Canaveral for refurbishment and reuse. SpaceX says that it saves about $7 million by reusing those fairings, so uh, well worth the effort to uh, get them back and reuse them. We're uh, now approaching the final 10 minutes of the countdown. We'll uh, be getting some tracking views from our friend Pete Costins, uh, who is located south of uh, the launch site. Should get a great view of that southern trajectory. And uh, currently his, uh, his big tracking rig is uh, looking at the, uh, the moon uh, great views uh, in these uh, excellent conditions, so uh, this will give you a little taster of what to expect. Well, we're now under 10 minutes from the launch of the Falcon 9. The loading of liquid oxygen is underway on both the first and second stages. The kerosene load is complete on the second stage and is continuing on the first stage for a few more minutes.
We're now at uh, T minus eight minutes. The uh, conditions remain great for tonight's launch. We have uh, just a few wispy clouds in the sky, as you can see from this uh, wide view from uh, the Kennedy Space Center press site, where I'm speaking to you from now. As I mentioned uh, earlier, we are uh, a little challenged with uh, so many of our people traveling or at Starbase. So uh, I'll be uh, not only performing the commentary, but switching the video and operating the cameras. So uh, I may uh, not be providing as much commentary as uh, you're used to, but uh, I will do my best to bring you uh, the best coverage of this launch. Uh, just dipping back into the chats, I uh, want to thank uh, E. McCoy for their uh, $5 super chat. Also, uh, Cloud Straff, who's gifted five Spaceflight Now memberships, and Astro Joe, one of our great moderators, uh, who's also gifted a membership. So if you've received a membership, uh, please uh, give them thanks uh, in the chat. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please hit that like button. That really helps us out. So we're now under seven minutes from the start uh, of this mission. Uh, the engine chill down sequence should be underway. They're letting a small amount of liquid oxygen flow through those Merlin 1D engine turbo pumps, and that will cool them down prior to the start of engine ignition at the T minus five minute mark. We'll also be getting uh, video from SpaceX very soon and audio as well. And we're piping in that live video from uh, SpaceX for you right now as uh, we reach the point in the countdown where the you're hearing some of the venting out of the launch pad there. Strong back retract has started. hear that confirmation that the start of sprung back retract has begun. That sprung back, uh, as I explained earlier, will um, the process of uh, retracting it will begin with the opening of the clamp arms which have been wrapped around the vehicle and providing some stability and uh, it will uh, track to an angle of about 1.5 degrees.
should hopefully start to see that retraction. clear to me that that sprung back retract. Trying to tell if there's a gap opening up there, but I'm not sure I see it. And there we hear confirmation that SpaceX has pulled an abort. Uh, we didn't see the retraction of the strongback structure at the launch pad. We would normally see the opening of clamp arms. We did not see that. There we see on the screen SpaceX confirming the uh, countdown has uh, halted. Very similar state of affairs as uh, we saw yesterday, it may be that the, although, although the actual abort was not called until much later in the countdown, uh, it did appear that things started to go off track around the time that the strongback structure was supposed to pull away from the vehicle. Uh, we did not see, doesn't appear that those clamp arms opened up. Uh, I'm, uh, outside uh, in the uh, the fading sunlight so it's a, a little difficult for me to see on the screen here but uh, it didn't look like those clamp arms opened up and the strongback itself did not retract from the vehicle um, so uh, quite an unusual set of affairs here um, I'm not sure we've ever seen this happen before and uh, certainly uh, interesting that it took some time for the uh, SpaceX launch team to uh, call that abort because with the uh, strung back retract not underway, that um, obviously uh, is a huge impediment to uh, the vehicle lifting off. And uh, it's definitely not something that they would probably want to uh, leave to to the last minute to uh, to get that strong back pulled away but uh, SpaceX rarely gives us detailed explanations of delays and uh, tonight will probably be no different um, but we can safely report what we're seeing with our own eyes here and uh, it uh, definitely looked like something was already uh, going off course at, uh, at about that uh, four and a half minute mark when the clamp arms should have started opening on the strong back. So SpaceX uh, does have uh, another opportunity to launch the Falcon 9 tomorrow. The uh, backup opportunity is uh, a four-hour window that opens at uh, 6.39 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. So another uh, disappointing night for the Falcon 9 team uh, who were hoping to add to SpaceX's day uh, with uh, another launch following the Starship test flight earlier today.
was uh, a beautiful night for a launch, as you can see in this view, mostly blue skies, just uh, a few wispy clouds. The uh, weather forecast for tomorrow is uh, still pretty good if, uh, if they are able to target that backup opportunity. The 45th Weather Squadron uh, in their forecast that was issued late last night, they uh, gave the uh, chances of a liftoff at, uh, at uh, 90%. Uh, only a 10% chance that there would be a violation of the cumulus cloud rule and uh, upper level winds and uh, booster recovery conditions not expected to be a problem then. there's no word from uh, SpaceX currently, no updates that uh, I'm seeing on social media to uh, uh, give us any indication of whether they will try tomorrow. But uh, that is the, the next available launch opportunity. The um, countdown clock on the SpaceX webcast appeared to uh, stop um, or wind back to the T minus four minute and 16 second mark. So it may be that that is the point at which uh, there was uh, an issue. Um, but uh, we definitely did not see the retraction of the strong back. Um, so visually that was the, the first indication we had that things were going off track. So uh, just returning to uh, the chat, I um, want to thank uh, Ken Bear for uh, a uh, $5 super chat. I very much appreciate your support. And uh, Roseanne Devasto for a $10 super chat. She asks, what's that noise? Um, I suspect you might be hearing a very loud air conditioning unit uh, that is attached to the NASA television building here at the Space Center, which uh, is uh, obviously in need of repair and uh, uh, drones on day and night. Um, so apologies for that if you are hearing that. I'm uh, actually sitting outside the Space Flight Now News Bureau at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, this is the view from the camera just to the right of me. We're uh, looking out over the turn basin and uh, seeing the Falcon 9 still firmly attached to the launch pad at uh, Complex 39A here.
So if you were just joining us and uh, hoping to see a Falcon 9 launch, liftoff was scheduled for 7.04 p.m. this evening. But uh, it appears that a problem occurred in the final five minutes of the countdown. The strongback structure did not retract, even though the countdown clock on the SpaceX broadcast did continue to tick down. And uh, an uh, abort was uh, called uh, a few minutes uh, later, but we, uh, we had our first indication that things were not going according to plan when the strongback did not retract. Uh, that process begins about four and a half minutes before launch. The uh, loading of propellants got underway 35 minutes prior to the planned T0. And uh, SpaceX uh, was uh, nearing the completion of the liquid oxygen load on both the first and second stages. The second stage and first stage were fully loaded with kerosene and uh, those tanks were ready to go. The RP-1 rocket grade uh, kerosene that the Falcon 9 uses. You can still uh, see the vapors streaming off the cold fuselage of the Falcon 9 first stage. That first stage which was uh, incredibly sooty earlier in the count before the start of that fueling process now shrouded in uh, vapor as the warm Florida air comes into contact with that cold metal. So uh, a $5 super chat from, uh, uh, sorry if I'm going to mispronounce your name here, Dryzala, um, asking, uh, is there any chance of the launch still happening tonight and any information on the new countdown? Uh, unfortunately, the, the Falcon 9 uses these uh, super chilled propellants. It allows SpaceX to uh, pack in more of that propellant by densifying it. And uh, that gives the Falcon 9 some additional performance, but it does mean that propellant has to be kept at the perfect temperature for lift. And uh, if uh, there is any delay in uh, that process, uh, it derails the whole launch. So we're um, not expecting to see them reschedule for tonight. They do have an opportunity to uh, try again tomorrow. Keep this uh, stream going for just a bit longer as we uh, would like to bring you uh, any news that we receive from SpaceX on the reschedule if uh, they are indeed going to make another attempt tomorrow. So, uh, so far, uh, not seeing any updates on social media from SpaceX.
And just a reminder that this uh, Falcon 9 booster uh, has already flown 18 times. Uh, could be there. There is some uh, technical issue related to the age of the booster. Um, that's uh, pure speculation on my part, but uh, it uh, it is uh, one of the uh, most used Falcon 9 rockets uh, still in service. So uh, perhaps uh, perhaps there is some technical issue related to the age of the booster. Um, but uh, once again, SpaceX rarely comments on these delays, so we may never know the reason for tonight's scrub. Would have been a beautiful evening for a launch here from the Kennedy Space Center. The uh, weather tomorrow uh, does look uh, very close to uh, conditions tonight. Just a slightly higher chance of uh, a uh, weather violation, but uh, not by much tonight. There was a less than 5% chance that weather would uh, affect tonight's launch. And uh, tomorrow that percentage uh, is uh, 10%. So uh, still an excellent forecast for tomorrow if indeed SpaceX targets a launch tomorrow. That uh, four-hour launch window tomorrow once again opens at 6.39 p.m. Eastern Time. That's uh, 22.39 UTC.
we uh, have heard that the Brevard uh, Emergency Operations Center has deactivated, so uh, that's probably a sign that uh, the launch uh, uh, is definitely not happening tonight. If there was any hope, uh, that's uh, certainly uh, certainly dashed. So um, if any of you are hanging on, hoping to see the launch, uh, definitely uh, unlikely to happen tonight. And um, we're uh, just waiting to see if SpaceX uh, reschedules for tomorrow night. While we um, wait uh, for any news, uh, this was a photo I took earlier today, um, a uh, Falcon 9 fairing heading out past the vehicle assembly building towards the launch pads. Uh, probably the next batch of Starlink satellites. Uh, we do think uh, following tonight's launch, the uh, the next Starlink will also fly from 39A as uh, SpaceX is getting ready for the first flight of a second generation cargo dragon from uh, Space Launch Complex 40 over on uh, Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That will be the first use of the new crew tower and uh, access arm there. Although uh, there will be no astronauts on board this uh, cargo delivery mission, they will use that crew access arm to load last-minute supplies into the Cargo Dragon spacecraft. Uh, since uh, SpaceX uh, moved on to the second generation of Dragon vehicles, all of those launches have taken place from Pad 39A. And just returning to a live view of uh, 39A, where the, uh, the Falcon 9 is uh, still sitting at the launch pad following the scrub, you uh, can now see that frost line on the vehicle starting to recede. Uh, that um, fuel gauge uh, works in reverse also. Uh, we can see the propellants draining from the tank as the the frost uh, burns off uh, and uh, recedes down the uh, tank along with the super cold liquid oxygen which uh, SpaceX uh, will be uh, attempting to recover as much of that as possible. Well, we're still not uh, seeing any updates from SpaceX. Um, usually, uh, if they're confident of 24-hour uh, turnaround following a scrub, they will uh, quite promptly update uh, with that information. Um, so uh, not sure what we read into that, whether that means that perhaps uh, they are still looking at whatever caused tonight's scrub before determining a new launch date. But that launch opportunity tomorrow once more opens at 6.39 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The four-hour launch window for the uh, Falcon 9 with its 23 Starlink satellites.
And uh, I want to thank those of you who are remaining with us tonight as we uh, await word on uh, when the Falcon 9 will be rescheduled for launch. I want to thank uh, Chris Corderia for his uh, $2 Super Chat donation. Uh, much appreciated. Once again, all of that goes towards uh, helping us cover these missions and goes towards uh, purchasing uh, new camera equipment and video equipment. And um, we uh, certainly appreciate everyone's support here tonight. And uh, another $5 super chat from Drizala. Uh, once again, apologies if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Uh, they ask, uh, do you think we should call Tony Stark to fix this? I'm sure he can get this up and running. Well, I, I think uh, for the movie, uh, Elon Musk was considered to be a bit of a role uh, model for that uh, that uh, the that role in the movie, um, and uh, and uh, indeed, I think he uh, had a cameo appearance. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, he's got a direct line to Tony Stark if uh, he needs his help. We've had no update from SpaceX in uh, about uh, 30 minutes. Um, they uh, have not uh, reported the scrub on their social media channels. And uh, as of a few moments ago, their website uh, has not been updated to indicate when the launch will be rescheduled. Once again, that scrub happened in the final five minutes of the countdown today. The uh, strong back uh, showed no indication of retracting as it should have. Uh, that process that should have started at the four and a half minute point with the opening of the clamp palms at the top of the strong back. The actual abort didn't come for, um, seemed like a couple of minutes beyond that. As you look out, uh, as uh, the light begins to fade here at the Kennedy Space Center, you can see that frost line continuing to drop down the first stage of the Falcon 9 as the propellants are drained from the tank.
So with about 30 minutes having passed since uh, the scrub of this launch, I think we will wind down our coverage tonight and uh, we will uh, be sure to uh, advise of uh, any news on uh, our social media channels if we hear of when SpaceX is rescheduling. If uh, they go for the next available opportunity, we will of course be back here tomorrow night to cover that. Before I go, I uh, want to uh, thank everyone who joined us tonight for this uh, launch attempt. I'm sorry you didn't get to see the, the Falcon 9 soar in these uh, pretty much perfect weather conditions here at the Kennedy Space Center, but stay tuned. We'll be back whenever the Falcon 9 is ready for another try. And uh, that could come uh, as early as tomorrow night at uh, 6.39 p.m. Eastern Time. I want to thank all my colleagues at Spaceflight Now for their hard work all day long to bring us, uh, all week long really, to bring us the uh, coverage of the Starship launch. We were uh, very lucky to work with our friends and colleagues at Lab Padre to bring you that coverage and uh, we want to extend our thanks to them for all their efforts in uh, putting together uh, our uh, live broadcast uh, earlier today. And uh, special thanks tonight to uh, Pete Carstens. He uh, didn't get to track the uh, rocket for us tonight, but we did get some spectacular views of uh, the crescent moon uh, in the uh, twilight sky here over central Florida. So, uh, Hopefully, uh, tomorrow night, we will get to see this Falcon 9 fly. But whenever SpaceX chooses to reschedule, we will uh, definitely be here. So I uh, want to thank uh, all of you, and particularly those of you who have contributed to our coverage through the Super Chat feature or by becoming a member or donating memberships. It's all really appreciated and uh, really helps us uh, bring you this coverage. So with that, I'm Stephen Young reporting live from uh, NASA's Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39 press site. We're signing off from tonight's launch coverage and we'll be back whenever the Falcon 9 flies. Have a great evening.